Hello everyone, welcome to the course of Chinese culture. Today, let's go on to learn modern and contemporary literature. Firstly, let's see some photos. Do you know who they are? Yes, they are important representatives of Chinese modern and contemporary literature, and they have made great contributions to the prosperity of modern and contemporary literature. Now let's start with the modern literature to get a better understanding of these figures. Modern literature spanned the period from 1919 to the foundation of the People's Republic of China in 1949. This period was distinctive as it brought along a new and revised literary language, form, and set of content and skills. In 1919, the May 4th movement, which led China to a new epoch, took place. The main theme of the anti-Japanese war period is to seek for ways of existence and liberation. Works of this period focus on people's lives with strong political overtones, emphasizing opposition to imperialism and feudalism reflect the hard struggle and the tremendous sacrifice during the War of Liberation from 1945 to 1949, and eulogize the selflessness displayed in the building of socialist New China. Lu Xun, as the founder of modern Chinese literature, was a great thinker a revolutionary figure in literature with pioneering thoughts. He used literary and art as weapons to transform the national spirit and character. His line, fires broad, accurately defy a thousand pointing figures. Hide bold like a wailing ox, I served the children. Vivid portraits his cultural personality. As a very productive and versatile writer, he wrote stories, poems, essays, literary criticism, and literary history. His first story, A Madman's Diary, was the first story written in the modern form of Chinese literature, symbolizing the great offset of modern Chinese fiction. His first collection of stories was Outcry, which includes, arguably, his most celebrated story, The True Story of Aku, which depicts a humble, ignorant, a stubborn and defiant peasant. As an ordinary man, Aku experiences, with an utter lack of self-awareness, a series of humiliations, and is finally executed during the chaos of the Republican Revolution of 1911. Aku is considered the personification of the negative traits of the Chinese national character. The term Akuism was coined to depict rationalization of defeat as a spiritual victory. The writer hoped to awaken Chinese people's awareness and the desire for revolution. Guo Mo Ruo was one of modern China's most important poets. He was born in 1892 in a beautiful village at the foot of Mount Emei in Sichuan province. Guo Mo Ruo was not only a poet, but also a story writer and a dramatist. His research made an outstanding contribution to the knowledge of ancient Chinese history and the Chinese language. The Goddess, his first poetry anthology, gave free reign to his powerful imagination, through which we could transform things in the universe into poetic beings that served as animated objects of his emotional response. 
by expressing the desire to break the confine of feudalism, voicing strong demands for social reform, and emitting boundless enthusiasm for the pursuit of high ideals. The goddess distinctively reflects the characteristics of the May 4th movement. His other representatives include Xu Yuan, Starry Sky, Zhuo Wenjun, Wang Zhaojun, etc. Next, let's talk about contemporary literature. It started with the establishment of the PRC in 1949. The concept of the 17 years literature usually refers to the period of Chinese literature between the founding of New China and the Cultural Revolution. Since its excessive emphasis of the influence of politics, the 17 years literature is always considered stereotyped and stiff. The literature of the period from the end of the 1970s to the beginning of the 1980s, often called scar literature or literature of the wounded, discusses the experiences of sundown youth with great, though not complete, frankness. During this period, poetry also changed in its form and content. For misty poets, Bei Dao, Gu Cheng, Duo Duo, and Yang Lian expressed themselves in deliberately obscure verses, which reflected subjective realism. A spirit of literary experimentation flourished in the second half of the 1980s. Some fiction writers like Wang Meng experimented with modernist language and narrative modes, and the young newcomer in the organization department was one of the classics. At the turn of the 21st century, Chinese literature undergoes great development, especially with the rise of the new generation born in the 1980s. Their works are in great diversity and full of individuality, but closely related to contemporary society. Han Han is representative of the new generation and enjoys high reputation. His first successful novel, Triple Gate, which reveals to the reader the life of a senior high school student and the contradictions and problems in parent-child, teacher-student, and classmates' relationship, and reflects the reflection, puzzle, and dream from students' perspective. Chinese writers and literature continue to gain recognition in foreign circles. In 2012, Mo Yan became the first Chinese to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. Born in 1955 and grown up in Gaomi, Shandong Province, Mo Yan joined the People's Liberation Army in 1976 and since then began to study literature and write. In his writings, Mo Yan draws on his youthful experiences and settings in his First place. His famous works include Red Sojourn, Big Brass, and White Hips. Life and Death Are Wearing Me Out, and the latest novel Frog. Red Sojourn was successfully filmed by director Zhang Yimou in 1987. With these literary efforts, Chinese literature is prospering and has won an important position in world literature. Okay, that's the end of this chapter. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.